Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we are going to do the Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions 2023. So these are what I think are the best quantitative finance masters um, for 2023 here. Now, the way I do this ranking is very different. It is not a ranking per se in the fact that one is better than other ones. Uh, you have to be selected by me to review your program. I reach out to quite a few programs, not all of them, of course. Uh, I reach out to quite a few of them though, and some respond back and get rated. Some respond back, get rated and don't pass. Um, and many, many programs have rejected me that they are not interested in being ranked. So with that being said, let's just dive on in here to the four programs that I think are stellar, top-notch uh, programs that I would consider applying to. And I'll talk a little bit about how this ranking is done or this kind of filtering and selection of programs here. Um, so the four programs are going to be Fordham University, it is the Master of Science in Quantitative Finance, and you can find all this on my website. Uh, Carnegie Mellon's University's Master of Science in Computational Finance, which is the oldest program in the, probably in the world in quantitative finance. Uh, the University of Michigan Masters of Quantitative Finance in Risk Management. And finally, Stony Brook University's Master and PhD in Quantitative Finance, which is one of the only PhD programs in the country um, for quantitative finance. So I'll note too on my website, I have a non-participant list below. I'm not gonna talk about them in this video, but you can go on my website and look at those. Those are other programs that, you know, I went on their website, I looked at a few other classes, I looked at their curriculum. I might know a few students here and there in these sorts of programs. I think they're okay, um, but either, you know, I didn't have the time to review them or I didn't ask them to be reviewed or they rejected me for some reason. But these are the other courses I think that are pretty good, but I have no special insight on these programs. Now, the four programs above here, so Carnegie Mellon, University of Michigan, Stony Brook University, and Fordham University, I sent them a list of questions and they filled out all the questions and they send all the information back to me and I review them. And no, I do not use some sort of linear regression weighted process of making up weights and adding them together here. So my rankings are solely based off the fact that I think these programs are going to be rigorous. Um, I think you're actually going to get good jobs that are in quantitative finance, not the industry actual quantitative finance jobs, meaning you will be developing models, um, not quant devs, which is doing computer science, uh, not trading, though you could probably get some of these jobs, you know, with these programs as well. Um, but those that are going to be very rigorously put together and structured here. Now, each one of these four programs also ends up with a badge. So I give them a badge on what I think their strengths are going to be. Um, Fordham University gets the rising star badge. So out of all four of these programs, I have talked to three of the program directors, met with staff, uh, career placement advisors, students. Like, I got to travel last year for work, and I stopped by and talked to some of these universities. I presented at these universities for educational purposes. Like, I'm trying to really dig deep and get you guys, like, inside information. Like, this is a really good program, and the, the directors, the career placement people, like, the program has your best interest at heart because many quant finance programs do not. They're there to make money and collect you know, your tuition. And unfortunately, there's a lot of programs out there that are doing that. Every single month, I hear about more and more programs that are going to you know, pop up left and right. I can't review them all, which is why this list is never going to be a complete list. Also to note, before I go into too much detail here, um, each one of these programs will get its own special review. So I will go through a video on each program uh, discussing the strengths and you know pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses of these programs and why I like them. Um, but just a quick overview here, Fordham University, as I mentioned, got the Rising Star Badge. They are doing stellar work right now. Uh, their director is amazing. She has industry experience. She's got it all dialed in. She is very strong on rigor. And we have had these discussions. Their students need to be mathematically and program. So programmability is a big, big piece for their program. They want students really hardcore programming as well. Uh, but you need to know the math and the stats. And they're trying to make their program stronger and stronger every single year. So Fordham University gets the Rising Star Badge. Carnegie Mellon gets the same badge as last year, which is going to be the well-balanced badge. So Carnegie Mellon has done an excellent job of putting together um, a variety of students and career paths over the years. So I would argue some of these are not going to be hardcore quant model developers, um, but they have this really wide breadth of information that's kind of taught. Uh, they have people going into asset management, wealth management, trading, algo trading, 
Um, I did a whole career report video on them as well. So if you search my channel for that, or maybe I'll put it in the description below. Uh, that video as well has these career reports, which is again, is more information that I review and look at when I'm reviewing these programs, specifically for Carnegie Mellon here. And you can see that they're actually placing students all over the board in big quant finance funds. So they are quite well balanced. They don't really have a specialization in one specific area here. Um, University of Michigan and Stony Brook both got the math badge. So not all quant programs are going to be super math heavy. And if you want to end up in actual financial engineering, which is a subset of quantitative finance, and you want to work with derivatives and you want to engineer financial products, um, University of Michigan and Stony Brook stand out from almost every other program in the sense that they do a lot of math. And this is not surprising as both programs are based in the math departments. I think Michigan's is actually based between math and statistics. Uh, Stony Brook's is based in the math department as well. Um, again, both programs brag and kind of, you know, hold the ground that your students will be taking math classes with PhD students. So it's going to be high end, like rigorous math. You're going to be really learning the nitty gritty details on the math side. So both of these programs get the math badge. One way my ranking system is different, as I mentioned, is I focus a lot on rigor and where the students are going in job placement. Um, I also review all the textbooks for these programs. So I require they send me the list of the core courses, um, the textbook for the core courses. And then one key note here is that out of all four programs, uh, three out of the four have a course with no textbook or a optional textbook. What this means is that you have industry practitioners teaching you hands-on material that you're not gonna get from like, you know, just bring that math professor over here and have them regurgitate some sort of simple process and use this book here and teach it. No, 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 they're bringing in industry practitioners, every program in general, so even the fourth one that didn't have it, they all have industry practitioners teaching within these programs. Uh, that makes these programs a little bit more applied and specific, which is what a strength of a good quantitative finance master should be. And this year specifically, to make the review a little bit better, I went out and I purchased even more textbooks. So there's, these are just four of them. I purchased seven new textbooks this year just to make sure that I'm looking at the textbooks, I'm getting a little bit better insight into like, is this really rigorous? Are you really teaching fundamental things that I understand that we need on the job that students don't have? And I think all four of these programs check that box. They are using good solid textbooks that a lot of us traditionally know, uh, like Stephen Shreve's books, um, but also they all kind of deviate and have their own little bit of specialty areas of, you know, one of them's using um, Glasserman's book here. So it's uh, Monte Carlo Methods and Financial Engineering. Uh, this is used at Michigan's program, which again is very math focused. So they are using, again, good math textbooks for the math side here. Anyways, that is the 2023 honorable mentions here from Fancy Quant. I will be putting together again videos hopefully kind of soon, might take me a little while, um, kind of breaking down each one of these programs a little bit more so you can get an understanding of like one program might fit exactly what you want to do and another one of these programs might not fit you very well at all. So just kind of help you kind of narrow them down. Um, but anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.